Come on. The man, it's here. The man who's running second in the championship, Warren Johnson, up against Kurt Johnson, third in the championship by some 34 points. The gap between these two in the series, so it's a good battle between the two of them. Very important as well. Very evenly matched as they set off from the line. Which of them is it going to be? Which of the Johnsons? It's Warren Johnson who just takes it. Look at that point zero zero seven seconds. He's the winner by. But Warren Johnson, the three times champion, goes through to the next round. Next up, we have another big battle on. It's Yates versus Jim Coughlin. And Jim Yates has the chance of taking the title here in the Pro Stock Championship. If he wins this run, Jim Yates will be champion again. He gets it. Jim Yates wins it. 7.007 seconds. And Jim Yates, with that run and getting through to the final four, is now the champion. That makes the second consecutive championship for Jim Yates and the McDonald's team. A great performance. So we're into the final four now. And will Jim Yates not only take the championship, but take the win here? Let's start off with Warren Johnson versus Troy Coughlin. Warren Johnson put out Kurt Johnson in the previous round. The championship may have gone now. Warren running second in the series to Jim Yates coming into this meeting. He's lost any chance of taking the title this year, but he'd love to take the win here at the Texas Motorplex. It's another very, very evenly run course and it's Warren Johnson who just takes it into the sixes a 6.99 second run for Warren Johnson now then Jim Yates up against Mark Powell this time Powell came through on a 7.02 Yates came through on a 7.00 temperatures having increased for the afternoon running but some fantastically high speeds being seen here not only in the pro stops but as we'll see in the top fuelers as well away they go then McDonald's car of Jim Yates is nearest us and it looks as though he's got the edge on this one to go through to the final Jim Yates just manages to go through 6.97 seconds at 197 miles per hour and the winner by 44 thousandths of a second so that sets things up very very nicely indeed now it's going to be Warren Johnson versus Jim Yates in the final The atmosphere really beginning to build between these two. The crowd getting well behind the competition now. Jimmy Yates may have wrapped up this series, but Warren Johnson would just love to be able to take victory here in Texas. Johnson, already the winner of four events this year, but Jimmy Yates has won five of the competitions. That gives you an idea of his mark of superiority, but uh, there's Warren Johnson definitely not to be discounted here in the Pro Stocks final. Jim Yates into place. And we're all ready for the big showdown now. the Christmas tree lights. Will it be Yates on the far side in the McDonald's car? The champion, 497 already. Will it be Warren Johnson getting a little bit of revenge on the near side in the black car? Staging, just creeping into position. And away they go. Oh, it's a great getaway for Jim Yates. It looks as though Jim Yates on the far side is just going to have the edge. He maintains it all the way to the line at 197 miles an hour. He is the winner for the ninth time this season. That's his fourth straight win in succession. And Yates really has put together a remarkable NHRA season once again to take his second title. Fantastic performance from Jim Yates. Let's just take another look. And you can see on the start, look at the replay again, the reaction time for Yates. Just that little bit faster than for Warren Johnson and an absolutely superb getaway for him confirming his ninth win of the year quite a big advantage by the end of it and delight for the crew once again it's McDonald's crew which has had such a good season celebrating again as Jim Yates and the Pontiac Firebird take the win. So the Virginia man clambering out of his car. Let's hear from him. 
Four in a row, Winston champion. Well, I tell you, that's the first time we've ever won four in a row, and I think we put on a pretty good show for the fans up there. Tell us about the staging duel up there. It's fun. You know, when I run Warren, it's always been fair and square, and right now all the points are over, and we're just out there trying to beat each other. I think we give the fans a good show. You know, I, I wouldn't go in, he wouldn't go in, he wouldn't go in, I wouldn't go in, and I give him a little tug, and he wouldn't move, so I just said, heck with it. I'd go ahead on in. I thought I had a little performance advantage, and that's all it took. Hey, he's still got a chance to win two more and make it six in a row. So, Jim Yates, the winner here at the Texas Motorplex, and in the championship, Warren and Kurt Johnson still battle for second. We'll be back with the funny cars. Then uh, the car smoked the tires and then caught on fire. The engine blew up, and I didn't think it was a big deal at the time. I was going not very fast, and, I, and the fire, I felt the fire hit the fire bottles. And I didn't think I was in big trouble until the smoke and the flames came into the cockpit. Then I knew I was in big trouble, and when the heat transferred through my gloves, started to heat up the old fire suit. I, I really, I really, I kind of panicked a little bit because I felt like if I get upside down in this thing, I'm going to be in trouble. So my biggest fear was trying to get out of this thing, and luckily I got out okay and hit the wall slightly, but I was okay. That frightening looking incident was to Cruz Pedregon last time out when uh, they had a very nasty incident at Memphis two weeks ago. Thankfully, Pedregon okay from that, surviving to tell the tale as you heard, but a frightening looking incident indeed. Pedregon racing in the funny cars of course so let's get on with the funny car competition now as tim wilkinson wilkinson in the pontiac and tony pedregon in the castrol ford do battle in this second round pedregon nearest the camera tony pedregon not cruz pedregon the man we were speaking to just a moment ago and he just uh, sneaks it smoke towards the end 300 miles per hour just 299 miles per hour in fact 4.97 at the elapsed time Mark Oswald in the Avenger versus Al Hoffman. Next up, and Al Hoffman in good form here in Tel oh, and it's a blow up for Mark Oswald straight away off the line. So for Al Hoffman, it's a very, very easy stroke to victory. Good time though, 4.96 seconds. Next up, John Force in the Castro Ford, the winner of the championship already in the funny cars, versus the man who's lying third in the series at the moment, Chuck Etchells with the Kendall Avenger. John Force, the six times champion, comes through to take another win and go through to the next round. Chuck Etchells, not quite able to do it. He's had one win this season. Five seconds, the elapsed time on that one. Fastest qualifier so far has been Ron Katz on 4.927 seconds, 312.28 miles per hour. Remarkable performance from Katz. He's up against Gary Densham and the NEC Avenger, but Densham's in trouble, and that's an easy win for Ron Katz. 5.03 seconds this time, slightly slower than his best so far in the weekend's event. Into the final four then of the funny cars. And Al Hoffman will be up against Tony Pedregon to start things off. Al Hoffman on the far side, Tony Pedregon a little nearer the camera. Not much difference between the top fuelers, except that the engines sit in front of the drivers, unlike the rails, where the engine sits behind the drivers, of course. Away they go, oh, and uh, not a great getaway from either of them, really, but smoking it badly is Tony Pedregon. So Al Hoffman comes through to take the win. 5.00 seconds once again, and at a good speed, 300 miles per hour. So Al Hoffman goes through to the final. Who will he be up against? It'll be between these two. Ron Caps there. And John Force, the champion already in the funny cars. There is Force, number one. Six times the champion, 47 years old now. Will he go through to make it another final? Away they go. Oh, and there's problems on the far side there for Ron Caps. And John Force comes through to win that one. And that's four wins to one when they've been up against each other so far this year in the elimination. So the final sees Al Hoffman versus John Force. John Force has to be favourite for this, although Al Hoffman has had one win this year. Hoffman, 49 years old, from Florida, started in his drag racing career back in 1979. His best season was the 1995 championship when he finished in second place in the series. Hoffman had five wins overall that year. But this year only scored the one victory so far. John Force, you have to say, is favourite for this one. John Force in the Castrol machine. 
He's already had six victories, the Ford Mustang. Taken six wins already this year. But don't discount Al Hoffman here. Looking to try and take a win. Force, in fact, uh, winning the last few. He won the Pennzoil Nationals, the Sears Craftsman Nationals and the Pioneer Electronics Nationals. Whit Baysmore beat him a couple of times in the second half of this year. But Force really has been top dog in the funny cars over the last few events. Let's see what Al Hoffman can do up against him this time. These massively powerful machines. Producing a minor earthquake every time that they set off to go down the strip. More than five and a half thousand horsepower from these machines. When you compare that to the rather puny sounding 750, 800 brake horsepower of a Formula One engine, five and a half thousand brake horsepower for these machines, and 0 to 100 in about 0.9 seconds. Here we go then, the final of the funny cars, Hoffman on the left versus John Force, the champion, on the right. The staging, they go, oh, and it's a red light for John Force, it's a red light for Force, and Hoffman is going to go on to take the victory. Not a particularly quick run in the end, he didn't have to push so hard, he saw Force back off. Force, red lights, and Hoffman takes his second win of the year. 5.08 seconds, but the time and the speed not important. The win is what counts, and Al Hoffman delighted with that. Take another look at it, and watch for the jump from Force. Nearest the camera, away he went. And red light. No way for John Force to take another win this year. In fact, Hoffman lit up the rears. He got that out of shape, had to back off. But it didn't matter at that point, because he was already coming through to take the win. And the delight from the crew after another successful run. Disappointment, though, for the Castrol team on this occasion and John Force. Ending a streak of victories over the last few events. He was out to make it three in a row once again. In fact, four in a row this time it would have been, but not this time. So he didn't quite match Jim Yeh's performances in making it four in a row in the Pro Stocks, as we saw earlier on. There is Al Hoffman, though. Let's get a chance to catch up with him. Boy, it feels like it. Uh, that was a good run, but uh, boy, it's, I'm happy for Pontiac and my whole crew. The way they've, them guys have worked through the middle of the season, what we've put up with and gone through since Gainesville. You know, I mean, a, a win was coming, and uh, to win over John Force, uh, you know, I mean, what can I say? He Did you see the red light? Yeah, I went kind of brain dead when I seen it. I said, John, what are you doing? And I sat there for a minute, but I mean, it was a win's a win. Sorry, John. Come over here, damn it. <laughs> sat there for a minute. Well, a minute, I suppose, in drag racing terms, means about a tenth of a second. Al Hoffman, the winner. John Force, the champion already, though, remember. Whit Basemore's lying in second place from Chuck Etchells and Tony Pedregon. Back for the top fielders in a moment. To the Revel Nationals, the 20th round of the 22-round NHRA. We're on with the top fuelers now, the top class, the fastest machines. And as mentioned earlier, this track is one of the fastest tracks that the competitors go to throughout the year. And we're looking for some pretty ex spectacular action from the top fuelers. Here we go, Bob Vandergriff and Joe Amato. Oh, and Vandergriff blows in very, very dramatic fashion. And Joe Amato takes an easy win, 4.62 seconds, 320 miles per hour. An easy win, he says, but in fact, what an pr impressive performance. That's the second time we've seen a car over 320 miles per hour. It's a new record, but look at that, that fire for Bob Vandergriff, certainly making very, very dramatic watching as well. But Joe Amato coming through 320 miles per hour second man to do that as i mentioned we've already seen a 321.77 from cory mcclanathan so we're seeing some highly impressive speeds here in texas this weekend on with gary selsey the championship leader now versus the lady racer kristen powell she's back after missing the last few races and away they go oh and kristen powell's in big big trouble on the far side there oh she recovered it somehow but it's gary selsey who comes through to take the win 4.71 seconds 313 miles per hour but Kristen Powell was on big trouble there on the other side of the track 
Look at that. Some, somehow she managed to get that straightened up again. But uh, Gary Selzy was blissfully unaware of that as he came through to take the win. Next up, we've got the 61-year-old from Texas, Eddie Hill versus Scott Kalita. Hill on the far side, and it's a good getaway from both of them as down the strip they go, but Scott Kalita it is who comes through to take the win on that one. 4.68 seconds, again a very impressive speed, 311 miles per hour. Now then, Corey McLenathan, the championship leader, and he's done a 321 mile an hour run already here after four rounds of qualifying. Oh, and the far side, Larry Dixon in trouble, and it's McLenathan who comes through to win, and it's another very impressive run. 319 miles per hour at the end of 4.59 seconds of running. How about that? Four and a half seconds to 320 miles per hour. Into the final four then, and it's going to be quite a competition with Gary Selzy versus Joe Amato. Selzy, the championship leader, Amato third in the series. It's the seventh time they've met this year. Selzy is two down, four wins for Joe Amato. So Amato with the advantage in terms of the record so far this year. And away they go. It's going to be a good battle between the two of them. Amato nearest the camera. Selzy on the far side. Nothing to choose. Just two thousandths of a second. It's Amato. It's Joe Amato, the winner. Fantastic from the veteran who takes the win once again. So... Amato is through to the final. Next up, we've got Scott Kalita versus Corey McLenathan. Corey McLenathan has had five wins in overall events so far this year, and he's beaten Scott Kalita 4-2 to two so far this season when they've come up against each other in the Eliminators. Away they go, McLenathan nearest the camera, and it looks as though McLenathan with the slight edge. Yes, he goes through to the final, and a good run, 4.8, well, 4.61 seconds, rather, and 313 miles per hour. McLenathan was the winner of this event, the Revel Nationals, in 1996. And McLenathan now into the final again versus Joe Amato this time. It's the third time they've met this season, and McLenathan is 2-0 up in terms of the competition between these two individuals. McLenathan trying to close up the gap to Gary Selzy in the championship. He's got an opportunity to do that here today. Selzy has not won quite so many events this year. He's won four as opposed to McLenathan's five so far. But McLenathan's had uh, a couple of poorish runs in the last few events. And that's dropped him back again in the championship second place. There's Joe Amato. Amato running third in the series at the moment. Wonderful noise from these incredible power units. And now the crew hands over all responsibility to the driver. And let's see who's going to be the winner of this round of the series. Just two more to go after this one. Oh, and it's a lot of... Oh, Amato smokes it very, very badly indeed. Oh, and Amato throws away the opportunity of winning here as, in fact, he had a problem as well, lost a cylinder, and McLenathan comes through to win it. 4.8 seconds, 302 miles per hour, not a particularly rapid run after some of the performances we've seen during the weekend, but it is a win for Corey McLenathan. That's his sixth win, indeed, of the season, closing him up a bit to Gary Selzy in the championship. There were the problems for Joe Amato on the far side. Let's take another look at that again. He really smoked the rears, but it was an engine problem as well that led to Amato's demise. And Corey McLenathan, nearest the camera, kept it all in a straight line just about to come through and take the win. So another win for the McDonald's team and that closes McLeod Nathan up to Gary Selzy in the championship with just two rounds to go. This is setting up to be a wonderful climax. Corey Mack. They're dancing on the tables in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Buddy, you won it. You wanted the record. I wanted the record, and, we, you know, we just, maybe just a little bit too much. It shook out there. I had to pedal it. Just one of those deals, I'll tell you. This McDonald's car run is so good. Mike and those guys are doing a great job. And Dad, Mom, everybody at home, man, this has been great. I'll tell you, the Revell Nationals first one is a good one to win. And I'll tell you, the points deal is not over yet. This McDonald's car just running so well and with easy care and 
you know, interstate battery, shell oil, Ziploc. I mean, I'll tell the people, especially interstate, you know, these are good people out here. Well, always good at listing the, uh, the sponsors, of course, and Corey McLean-Lathan, no exception. Joe Amato congratulating him after what has set things up wonderfully for the end of the season in the Top Fuel Championship. We'll have to follow all the events in the NHRA here on Eurosport.